Well, views for days. Here's a really nice lookout from up here. We've got some, yeah, pretty bad weather rolling in. Sorry, it's starting to yeah, rain now, so let's get a bit of a move on. Oh man, not the best day to be out here, eh? It's raining and windy. But man, what a view, hey? It's a shame I can't really see it. It's kind of covered in cloud, but you can just imagine on a nice sunny day, this would be absolutely stunning. Like even now, it's bloody gorgeous. Just all the hills and the rocky pagodas is pretty bloody nice. Well, I think I found a pretty good option for camp. So just back from the cliff edge, which is just over there, there's this nice little clearing just here. So I should be able to make work for camp and string up the tarp shelter somehow. It's also nice and protected from the wind, which is good. Um, but I still got a bit of time, so I'll go for a bit of a wander around and just see if we can find anything better. But if not, then this is what we do. Oh man, the wind <laughs> is so strong. Oh, oh nearly lost the, the older crew bar, but I need a chin strap. But man. How good is this view? The clouds are starting to move that way and the sun's coming out. Bloody hell, it's an absolute cracker from up here. Oh man, this bloody, oh, oh, this is like impenetrable, eh? I'm trying to see if I can get a little bit further down into the gully, but man, this regrowth is something severe. It is like almost impenetrable. Fire out, like, look what we have to push through. Horrible. Now, if I was desperate for some cover, as this for a, a tiny little cave, it's probably only about two feet high, so you wouldn't be able to sit up in it, but it's quite deep and give you heaps of protection from any rain, so yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool little overhang. It's not a bad little option um, to camp in tonight. It's actually uh, just big enough that you could sleep in there, I reckon. It's be protective if any rain comes. And there's also, there's no wind on this side of the hill as well, so I'm completely protected. So, not a bad option. Um, but I have a little bit more of a wander around. And yeah, we'll make the call. All right, well, decision made. I think I'm gonna camp in old Pinky here. Like I said, I do have my tarp with me, but the fact there's a nice little overhang here, I may as well try and take advantage of it. And if I find it does rain later and this doesn't give me enough protection, I can always um, yeah, string out the tarp between a few trees. So yeah, I'm absolutely starving, so I'm gonna sit down and have some lunch. All right, so for today's lunch, I've got one of these Atlas Wild Bars, got some barbell biltong, and then some snakes, which you can never go wrong with snakes for lunch, can you?
All right, so as usual, I'm just going to use the Corinthia XP2 bivy, and then I'll pair that with the Alton minus five quilt and my Nemo tensor insulated mat. Even though it's still deflating on me, I just haven't had um, the time to get a new mat. I think I'm probably going to go with the Cedar Summit Etherlite insulated mat. I've got the non-insulated version and it's so bloody comfy and I've heard the, um, the insulated one is really good. The only issue is I'm pretty sure the R value on that mat is like three, whereas this one's like 4.2 or something. So this one's a little bit warmer, um, but look, if I can get a mat that doesn't deflate on me, then I'll be a happy bloke. <laughs> so yeah, and then we just got a little ground sheet and a yeah, Cedar Summit pillow. I just seen there's somewhere I could tie the string to to get that off my head. <laughs> I just broke the rock off. <laughs> Whoops. Man, I bloody love this quilt, hey. I think um, Sam from Alton, he's done such a good job with this quilt. Like, it's really well made. The stitching on it's really nice. It's super warm. And um, yeah, it's a pretty pretty reasonable price as well. So yeah, a good quilt. So definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for a quilt. Now the Corinthian Bivy does come with a pole to sort of uh, get that fabric off your face, but that's the one downside with this bivy is I find just um, yeah that hoop isn't high enough. Like your face is still sort of hitting the fabric, and that's one thing that kind of um, yeah drives me nuts with this bivy. Is I just wish it was that hoop was a little bit higher. So what I'm going to do instead is um, I've just got a little stick here, there's a little cavity up in the roof of the cave. I'm just going to pop that there. I'm just tied a bit of string to this little loop, and I'll just run that over that and use that to sort of lift it up. And yeah, I can adjust that once I'm laying inside it. I could probably bring that up a little bit higher if I wanted to. But yeah, that's um, that's heaps higher than the hoop. The hoop's usually sort of about here. So I find doing this gives you a lot more space. So we've got this dead fallen branch just here. And if we have a look at the bark, it's a, a nice stringy bark, nice and fibrous. So I should be able to yeah, rough this up, make it into yeah, a bit of a sort of cotton ball. Oh, it's a bit hard to do one handed. <laughs> um, but yeah, sort of rough this up and then we should be able to strike it with a ferro rod or use some chai cloth and um, yeah, get this going. So I'm just going to clear all the leaf debris just so we can have the fire nice and safely. Right now I don't usually create a fire ring so I find you don't usually need them but in this case I'm on a bit of a slope here so I thought I might just um, yeah, create one to stop any sort of embers um, rolling away. Um, but I have cleared the leaf litter right around the fire so there shouldn't be any issue there. Um, but when I do create a fire ring, I like to do it like this. So that way you have all the sticks at the back here um, with the fire gone and then you can scrape all the hot coals up into this front section and that's where you can cook over. But also, yeah, when you're finished with the fire, when you're packing up tomorrow, make sure you get rid of the fire ring. There's nothing worse than coming across old fire rings in the bush. Um, and then put the rocks back so in a way that you can sort of create um, potential habitat for an animal that might come across it.
Wow. So I was just coming up this rocky pagoda to take in the sunset and this guy gave me a big surprise. I think he's dead unfortunately. If he's not, he's uh, in a very deep sleep because he's not moving at all. If you can see that, the back of his leg looks a little bit, I don't know, funny colour I say. Yeah, not sure what the cause is. It's really sad to see. Kainas are such a beautiful creature. Just look at the markings on him. Well, he's obviously decided to come up here and thought this would be a nice little resting place. Which it sure is, buddy. That is impressive, eh? It really feels like the land before time out here. Just in like every direction, it's just more of that. It's just rugged, wild country. You can spend like the rest of your life exploring this area and only just scratch the surface. And what a place, eh? Kinda wish I had a gin and tonic right now. <laughs> but let's go back and get the fire going. You know what? I don't think he's dead. I just touched his tail and he made like a real low hissing sound. Oh, yep, he's doing it again. Okay, I think he's uh, awake. Far out, that was crazy. Yeah, I, I think he's alive. I guess he's uh, maybe hibernating or something, but I've never seen that before. Like, he was looked like dead to the world, eh? Like I was talking around him and stuff and didn't show any sign of life until, yeah, just then I sort of touched his tail just to see how he felt, thinking he was dead. And um, yeah, he just made this real low kind of hissing sound and then, yeah, did it again, but just got louder and louder. So I'm gonna leave him alone for now. Um, but yeah, it's good to see he's not dead because man, guanas, they're bloody beautiful creatures. Gosh, that light is bright in my face. <laughs> well, the rain's back. Which is uh, a little bit annoying because the fire's outside of the, the overhang, so for me to cook up means I'm gonna get pretty wet, which is a little bit annoying. Um, I've just got a pretty quick and simple um, stir fry to cook up tonight. Should be tasty. Um, I don't know how much filming I'm gonna do because, yeah, like I said, it's raining, so <laughs> I don't want the camera to get too wet. But um, yeah, I'll do my best. Right, we'll just get some water boiling for the noodles. Oh, shit. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, oh bloody hell. <laughs> Clumsy as hell. All right, now just for the stir fry, I've just got some broccolini, some shallot onion, uh, red capskin, and just some sardé tofu. 
And as for the sauce, I've just got some Kewpie roasted sesame sauce. I'm just going to add the QP roasted sesame sauce. This stuff is so body tasty. Right now that I've got my cut back, it's time for a gin and tonic. I'm so keen for the gin and tonic, okay? Absolutely itching for it. We've got some lime for the food and some lime for the gin and tonic. Man, this looks like a pretty damn good dinner to me, eh? Hey? Well, cheers, guys. Oh, that is the bee's knees. That is delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Well, we've woken to a pretty misty morning this morning. But this wind's starting to pick up now and it's starting to blow all the clouds away. It's pretty cool watching all the mist move across the, the mountains in the distance. Oh man, it's such a, a dramatic landscape, eh? These massive rocky pagodas down here and yeah, it's just an endless sea of pagodas. It's really something special. We've also got um, some live birds in this gully down here just singing off their morning songs, which is nice. But yeah, man. What a spot.
This looks bloody epic, eh? <laughs> Definitely uh, not roughing it this morning. Mm. Cannot beat pancakes for breakfast, eh? So good. Such a warm sleep last night. I was so toasty, eh? Like I said, that quilt is, yeah, really warm. No condensation as well. So yeah, the bivy um, held up pretty well, considering we woke up to a lot of uh, mist this morning. I guess the cave helps with that though. I think I woke up maybe six times last night to blow up the mat. <laughs> so that is something that I have to get on top of ASAP. I'm going to Bali next week um, for a week, so. When I get back, that'll be the first thing I do, is order a new mat. Now, because I don't really have any water left, it's still a little bit warm. What I'll do is I'll just mix a lot of soil around with it because the soil is quite moist as well. Um, and that should uh, take care of it. Yeah, so like I'm doing, just mix in that soil with those hot embers, then after a while that'll actually become yeah cool to touch and you can run your hands through it. So I find this is the second best way to put out of a fire if you don't have any water. Because I cannot stress enough how important it is to take care of your fire pit after you've um, yeah, gone camping because there's way too many dudes out there who just leave camp and they um, leave hot embers burning away in the old fire pit and all it takes is a gust of wind to blow those embers into some dry leaf matter and then boom, you've got a bushfire. So, I cannot stress enough, yeah, to take care of your fire pit. That's one thing I can teach you guys is to look after your fire pit because we're pretty lucky in New South Wales to be able to have fires in quite a few national parks. Um, so hopefully it stays that way. But like I said, it only takes a few idiots to ruin it for the rest of us. So yeah, be good uh, stewards of the land and look after your fire pit. Well, old mate's still here. And it looks like he's awake now, which is good to see, but he's still in the exact same spot. So it kind of begs me to question whether he might be injured. Like I said, that back leg looks a little bit how you're going. And it seems like a weird spot for him to be hibernating. So if anyone knows, yeah, feel free to leave a comment below because I'm really curious. He seems like such an easy picking for like an eagle to go by. So I don't know, I hope he's all right. What's about this is mum. Oh, no, nah, your girlfriend. Oh, the missus. Hello. How you going? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just doing my sign out video. Oh. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> Man, you should see the view from up here. It is amazing. It is bloody epic. All right, well, the rain's here. So I think that's probably a good time as any to call it quits for this video. This is a shame. I could honestly sit up here all day and just look out this view way and just listen to the birds. It's a, a really beautiful place. It's did not know what to expect on this trip. Um, just honestly just picked a little point on the map and thought I'd come and check it out and I had no idea the view was gonna look like that. So yeah, very pleasantly surprised. 
But on that note, it's probably about time we yeah, wrap up the video. I just want to say a massive thanks to all you guys watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hooroo. Well, see you, buddy. Enjoy the view.